Hello, I'm Tara Brabazon, and I'm the Dean of Graduate Studies at Charles Darwin University, and welcome to Outrider 24, the confirmation of candidature. This is the second part in our four-part backward mapping series. Hector, well indeed Hector's son, is back with us. A lighter model of Hector has joined us because I'm on the Sydney CDU campus. Yes, I'm on the road. It's been a fantastic experience, but welcome to Sydney CDU. But the point of this four-part backward mapping series is to move you from zero to hero, to move you from thinking about a PhD to actually being able to complete one and speaking about your research to delivering it on a particular date. The point of this series, the reason we're here colleagues, is so that we can remove the arbitrariness to higher degrees. You know, it's a vibe, oh, I'm going to do it, it's going to be great, hoping that something great is going to happen. Trust me, in the middle of a higher degree program, nothing great is going to happen. So what we're going to do is render this very difficult process predictable. We're going to give it rigour and we're going to give it accountability through backward mapping. And this is our first stop. In many ways, the confirmation of candidature is the most important milestone. Why is it the most important milestone? It emerges in your first year between the six month mark and the 12 month mark of your candidature. Why this matters so much, and we'll talk about many reasons it matters so much, but one is that you are demonstrating that you can complete this thesis in three years. So let's talk about this. Let's talk about how we align task orientation and time orientation. And in a COC, you have to perform both. Okay, why the COC matters so much is that it is the deal breaker in Australian higher degree programs. This is the moment where we assess if you, yes you, hi, if you can actually do a PhD. We're assessing you and we're assessing your project. Now many universities, including the University of Western Australia, render all enrolments provisional until the student has completed a COC. Now we don't put you through that at Charles Darwin University, but you get a sense of how important this event is. Because in the Australian system, the confirmation of candidature is the deal breaker moment. If you fail at this point, then you are removed from the program. It is what we call a hard barrier this is the deal breaker. Now I know this all seems a bit ruthless and a bit terrible. The reason why this hard barrier, this deal breaker exists is because, simple reason, the only thing worse than wasting one year of your life in a higher degree program because you can't do it, is wasting three years of your life in a higher degree program and then confirming that you know what, it's not for you and you can't do it. So, important moment. What are we looking for? So I'm now in this outrider moving to the assessor's role. So what am I as an assessor looking for in you and your research to ensure you pass through this confirmation of candidature? First one is crucial. Do you have a research problem? Is there a problem that you are trying to solve? Are there research questions? Have you demonstrated an ability to configure and construct? research questions. And this is important because at this point we're assessing originality. Have you got the capacity or the potential to demonstrate an original contribution to knowledge? Why this matters is obviously that is the definitional difference between a PhD and a research master's. Research master's magnificent qualification. I have four of them. I have one PhD, but a master's is a synthesizing piece of research. Important, great. The PhD is original contribution to knowledge. So we're looking to see if the spark, if the possibility of originality is there. Now, I just wanted to raise one particular issue or important moment for our master's students. You are incredibly important to me. The master's qualification is spectacular. But in 
a milestone COC for a master's degree, some interesting things can occur. So for example, if in that first COC event for a master's, you are demonstrating doctoral level progress, and you're also demonstrating originality, then the COC, the confirmation of candidature, can also become an upgrade event. We can upgrade you to a PhD. So it matters for the master students as well. So what are we assessing? We're assessing your writing so far. Can you write? Can you write at the required level? Are you able to configure and shape the scope and scale of a research higher degree? We're assessing your scholarship. Is your scholarship at the required level? And yes, we're assessing methods and methodology. And I would argue probably too much of the confirmation of candidature focuses on the methods because the methods are pretty straightforward. It's the how. But we're assessing, do you understand methodology? Do you understand methods? Do you understand the difference between them? And ha have you demonstrated good time management? Because remember, the whole point of having a milestone system in each year of your PhD is that you are backward mapping. You're starting at your completion and in your confirmation of candidature, you are demonstrating the work that you have already constructed and you are demonstrating through a Gantt chart, anything at all, your capacity to finish in three years and what you have to do at a granular level to make sure that you finish in those three years. Right, so that's crucial. Backward mapping must be in place. If you've got no sense if this thing could go on for 10 years, you're going to be stopped at the COC. So you need to demonstrate how you will finish in three years. And oral communication colleagues is another proxy. Have you delivered your research at a seminar, at a conference? Now, this might be too early in your program for you to do that. So don't panic about that. But it does demonstrate the importance of delivering your research by digital means. So, for example, if you've conducted a podcast with your supervisor, with your peers, with your mate in the lab, if you've configured a born digital object in some form, that's great. That's a confirmation that you can disseminate your research orally. There's also compliance issues that we need to confirm at this point, and this is absolutely crucial. We need to confirm that your export controls are in place, particularly for our colleagues in science and engineering. Big hi to all our science and engineering crew team. Obviously, export controls matter. If your research has any capacity of a military or a defence use, then that needs to be present in the document and export controls need to be signed off and confirmed in some form. Similarly with third party agreements, if you've got a formal agreement with an industry provider, with a stakeholder, with a community organisation, then that needs to be presented in contract form at this stage and made sure that it's working effectively between all the stakeholders and we know what's going on. A lot can go wrong in stakeholder industry partnerships, but they don't if everybody's facing the table in the first year. And of course, also, here we go, research integrity. Have you, have you and your supervisor or supervisors made a vert agreement about the authorship of articles. Now, these details about the conversation that you've had and the agreements that have been reached about authorship need to be presented in this confirmation document. Also, every one of our students at CDU, and I recommend this as a practice around the world, to be frank, you must run at least one of your documents, so the proposal or the literature review or something, through a text matching software program. Now at CDU we use Authenticate. I'm a big fan actually. I think this is a, a nice bit of kit as the young people would say. It's a great bit of software but you are running a bit of work through Authenticate in the first year for many reasons. Firstly you are confirming that you can use the software. So that means you're not going to hit the day before you submit and go, I can't work this software. You're going to trial the software in the first year. You're going to show that you can do the work in the software and that you can read the report. And of course, that report presented in the COC provides the trigger 
for a discussion about academic integrity. So if you are demonstrating, oh, that paraphrasing's not great, there may be some note-taking issues, that's cool. You're not gonna get hit over the head by it. It's diagnostic at this stage, but it's important that it's used as a diagnostic and if issues emerge in the first year, they are addressed. Okay, so that's what I'm as an assessor looking for. So what do you need to do? Hey, what do you need to prepare? What do you need to present in a confirmation of candidature? Yes, you will have to present a research proposal of some kind. Yes, we are all closer to death for every research proposal we have to write. But can I state, and this is the important bit, this research proposal for the confirmation of candidature doesn't have really anything in common with that proposal you put in place to get enrolment and admission into the program. So what we're doing at this point, why we need to see a research proposal, is we are assessing seriously if this research project is viable. Is this a viable project? Okay, so what's in this research proposal for a confirmation of candidature. Obviously your title, have a great title, have a really, what I call the lipstick title, which is a big at the front and then a descriptive subtitle, so a title is great. Have the summary of your research. What are we doing here, team? Orient your assessor into the vibe. Where are they going? Why are they doing it? Then you move, and this is the crucial bit, the rationale for your research. So why are you doing this project? Who are you, girlfriend? Why are you doing this project? And why are you doing this project at this particular time? Why now? Why you? That's the rationale section. And also I pick up a lot of motivation for the student in that section, so it's crucial. Also, you're presenting the research objectives, the research problem, and or the research questions, right? That's a section all of its own. Then we enter methodology and methods. <laughs> Make sure it's clear, concise, and you've done your work. You've shown the previous studies that have been successful using this methodology and these methods. You also then need to explore and present how your research is situated in your discipline or disciplines. Please do not use transdisciplinary or interdisciplinary or antidisciplinary or postdisciplinary here if you don't know what those terms mean. You have to earn the right to use those terms. So if, you, if you're saying this is transdisciplinary, that's great. Explain exactly what you mean by that and what scholars have led you to that transdisciplinary strategy. Always remember, if you're critiquing the disciplines, you have to demonstrate expertise in the disciplines first before you build relationships between them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Remember the point of milestones, the whole reason we're here is to provide evidence. So therefore, the final few sections of your proposal involve your theoretical perspective. Now, depending on your discipline, that could be capital T theory, or it could be small t theory. We need your theoretical perspective. We also need to see, and it might be a standalone document, a literature review of some kind. Now, in some disciplines, it may be a systematic review, it may be a scoping review, that's cool, but we need to see that you've got a grasp of this literature. And of course, finally, my obsession, I need to see your reference list. I know exactly where you're at when I look at your reference list and see what you are reading. So that is your proposal for a COC. So that's the basic stuff, that's the benchmark stuff. Can you do it? And have you provided evidence to demonstrate that you can do it. Because as I said, the point of the milestones is not to, it's not a ticker box exercise. It's not like that old annual review of progress. Are you happy? Yes, I'm happy, I'm happy. Happiness is not the point here. The milestones present the evidence. So you need to present formative and summative evidence here. So as a candidate, you are being assessed. Yes, your research is, but it's also about you. Can you do it? Are you motivated? Have you worked hard enough? What's the scope and the scale of the work you have produced? Now, we then move to the professional development section. Have you undertaken professional development? This is your formative development, right? So in this first milestone, I need to see what activities have you done in CDU, in your institution, and outside your institution, and you need to present evidence for that. What is your professional development? Present the documentation for that. And also at this point, remember, backward mapping, 
backward mapping. Remember, you need to talk about the skills you don't have and you will need to develop before your mid-thesis review. You also need to talk about resources. So let's be honest as a family here, okay? Let's get real, this is resources. And I'm speaking, of course, as a former head of school as well on this. You were let into a higher degree program because you specified a required set of resources. So you were let in, you said, this is what I need, and the head of school and everybody signed off, okay, this is what you need, we can provide that. If at the COC you suddenly require a synchrotron, <laughs> if at the COC you suddenly require all these magical new resources, then trust me, you need to specify them in the COC, but you also need to know that that may not end well because those resources may not be available and therefore the project cannot continue. So you have to be really honest in your resources. Uh, remember, and this is one of my obsessions, universities are funded on public money. Every dollar that we spend, we are accountable for, quite rightly. People that never have a chance to go to university are paying their taxes so that we have the opportunity, the gift of an education. Every dollar matters. So therefore, we're also assessing your capacity to budget. Let's talk about the timing of the confirmation of candidature. I think this is absolutely crucial. Yes, by the policy, it must, 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 must be held between six months and 12 months. And I have some recommendations about timing that you can absolutely ignore. An early confirmation of candidature is a really good idea, I think, if you're in the social sciences or allied health, applied health, right? Because you need to enter fieldwork. You can't really start till you've got ethics. You can't get ethics till you've got through the confirmation of candidature. So if you need to do ethnography or fieldwork team, it's very important that you go early, work hard, go early, get the ethics clearance, go do fieldwork. Or in the sciences, hi team, if you've done that really quick, fantastic literature review, you've worked out what the gap in knowledge is, then, you know, in the many areas of the experimental sciences, you're not going to need ethics, but you've done your scoping review, your literature review, thanks for playing, off you go, start. So go early. So I particularly recommend crew go early if they've got field work, if there's some data collection issues, or you're doing experimental science, right, then please go early if you can. In the humanities, it's quite hard to go early. Now, it seems sort of counterintuitive, like what do these people, these are my people, by the way, what do these people actually do? Surely you can go early. Well, not really, because you really have to dig into the archive. You have got to read a body of work before you can present anything, to be frank. There's a, a much higher benchmark you've got to reach. So if you're saying, I'm doing a post-structuralist analysis, well, are your girlfriend, and post-structuralism is a very, very big church, and you are going to be asked direct questions on uh, workers in that very broad church. So you've got to really have the parameters in place to be able to answer questions. So social sciences, sciences gain a lot from going early. Now, if you go late, and obviously it's a bit frightening, so you go, you put it off as long as you can. The problem is if you go late, it can and will hold back your entire candidature. So watch this. Get yourself to a point where you've done sufficient research and sufficient planning to confirm an original contribution to knowledge. Make sure you've got a strong plan, that your backward mapping is in place. <laughs> Buddy. Uh, make sure your backward mapping is in place and then go for it. Then go straight to your confirmation of candidature. You will have a confirmation of candidature event. There will be a date, there will be a time, and assessors will be there. And you will have to present your project orally. Please do not read your proposal. Please, 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 life is too short. Do not read your proposal. You are speaking to the proposal. Everyone's read your proposal. Speak to it, and you'll be asked questions at the conclusion of that presentation. So what happens is the written component and the oral component, they come together and they are the accessible components of your confirmation of candidature. So the final bit of your confirmation of candidature document, indeed the final bit of this outrider, is talking about backward mapping. The reason we're here, the most important bit of milestones. And what you need to do in this document is plan to the next milestone. So you need to specify backward mapping, specify in great detail the goals that you are going to achieve in the next year. 
And remember, you've got to finish in three years. What do you have to do in the next year to finish in three years? So specify your goals in some or all of the following areas. Think about professional development. What software are you going to need? What hardware expertise are you going to need? Time management, are there personal skills there? Information literacy, library skills you're going to need? Communication skills, right skills you're going to need? And remember, if you are a member of Right Club and Digital Office Hours, these are peer-based caring structures that improve writing and improve your candidature. So if you've committed to those particular groups, then acknowledge that in your COC document. And then, of course, in that backward mapping component, think about the actual research you're going to do. What experiments are you going to do? What archival work are you going to do? What field work are you going to do? Write the words, put it down, specify Gantt chart if you can, specify what you're going to do before the next milestone. And also, be cool with this, log perspective problems. What could go wrong and how are you going to handle those. Okay, if you specify specifying your conferences that you're doing, your seminars as well. So any sort of dissemination work, specify that too. All of this is demonstrating to assessors that you will finish in three years. That's the point. If you don't specify enough in your backward mapping section of your confirmation of candidature, your supervisor, your postgraduate coordinator, your assessor will refuse the milestone because you're not demonstrating through backward mapping how you're going to finish in three years. So it's a fascinating vibe really because you've got to balance ambition and doability. And you need to demonstrate that you are going to finish in three years. Now this is incredibly stressful. I know, it's incredibly stressful, but the gift of all of this is that you receive early feedback. And as, as grandma would say to your team, trust me, getting early feedback from an assessor at a confirmation of candidature is a hell of a lot better than an examiner picking it up at the end. <laughs> And remember, your supervisors will be there to support you. They'll be in the room and they'll support you creating this document. I'm teaching our supervisors to run mock confirmation of candidatures. I'm very happy to run a mock for you. So you've gone through the process if that relaxes you a little bit. So all of this is about being innovative, being ambitious, being fabulous and showing the world how truly great you are. So from Hector and Tara from the glorious Sydney, we wish you love, light and peace. Tea out.